her out. I'll link her channel down below. So today we wanted to do, um, I guess like a foundation routine kind of, but we wanted to take a bunch of different popular foundation tools and kind of come together and show you guys which ones we think are truly the best. She has dry skin, I have oily skin. So for those of you with dry skin, Allison will be telling you which one works the best for dry skin. And for those of you with oily skin, I will be telling you which ones work best for oily skin. So, so um, right now we're actually gonna try the same exact foundation, which is the Estee Lauder Double Wear. And it's actually the same color, which is, uh, mine says 1C1. What's which the Which is Cool Bone. Yeah, which sounds yeah. 10 times cooler than 1C1, who was not <laughs> saying that stuff. We're each gonna start using um, our favorite sponge type thing. Hers is the Real Techniques brush. Mm -hmm. um, sponge. Not brush, sponge. <laughs> uh, and then mine is the Original Beauty Blender. And um, as she said in her last video, hers is definitely more full coverage. So if you like that type of thing, that would definitely be the sponge. And I'm sure she'll, we'll show you uh, what it looks like at the end of our skin. Yeah, the difference between the coverage and everything. So. Yeah, and then the Beauty Blender shears it out. So if you're someone like me that likes thinner coverage, then this one's probably the way to go. I think I got most of it off. Yeah. Woo, there's my face, guys. I find that if you put it on the back of your hand, that it really warms the foundation and then helps it apply to your skin a lot better. I wish I did that. I just put mine straight on and that. <laughs> and I feel like it doesn't really soak up as much foundation if you apply it to your face first. If you apply it straight to the sponge, I feel like it does soak up more foundation. No, it probably does. I have foundation so. on this more than I have on my face half the time. Now normally, a lot of the times I will, like I said, apply my foundation with like a flat foundation brush or a stippling brush if I want really full coverage, but for the sake of this video, we're just going to go straight in with the sponges and kind of show you guys the coverage. Um, I think I'm, we're using a mirror down below, so if we're looking like this, we're not being weird. <laughs> still see I didn't do as much I did a very little drop and it covered most of my face um I do have some acne scarring and hyperpigmentation going around on my skin and that's just something that I deal with and I don't tend to cover it up mm -hmm. but I mean it definitely did a lot better than like a normal drugstore foundation this is yeah. actually a really good one um if you want a good coverage but not so caked on this is this is actually really great I've never tried it yeah. before this is my first impression of it and it's I, I definitely like it yeah, and I think it looks really good on your skin, too. It definitely did a lot of color cancellation. It definitely helped with her redness a lot. And oh, yeah. I also have a lot of acne scarring, as you can see. That it, That's why I like a full coverage, just to mm -hmm. mostly conceal acne scarring and any acne breakouts. So we pretty much use the same amount of foundation. And then you can keep layering the foundation if you want to, of course. But oh, yeah, no, it was definitely buildable. I kept doing it over a lot of my acne, and it covered perfectly. So this is the IT Cosmetics Buffing Foundation Brush, and I really, really like a flat top foundation brush. The flat ones I find don't work as good. They don't push the product into your skin. The great thing about these type of products is they're going to give you fuller coverage because they're pushing the product into your skin, and this is, like I said, great to use before a beauty sponge as well. So. That's, that's great advice, actually. Yeah, I think the same thing is when I actually push it into my skin, it definitely gives me more of a full coverage. Um, or even uh, buffing it into the skin, I find yeah. it gives it more of that airbrush, glowy look. Mm -hmm. And I, I tend to definitely go towards that. sponges kind of like everybody says I think it's pretty true that the knockoff sponges really aren't that great I mean the real techniques one if you don't want to spend the $20 on the beauty blender for six dollars to get one of these it's definitely worth it blender is very soft the beauty blender is a little bit more porous yes but they both do expand like this is the real technique sponge when it's dry and then it definitely expands a lot when it's wet and the beauty blender does the same um, yeah, it expands a whole lot. As you can see, I'll show you the difference. Um, I don't know if you could tell if it's focusing on it, but this one you can definitely see all the little pores inside of it. Mm -hmm. So it's it, it definitely sucks up a lot of um, 
water and foundation so if it's not fully wet i do notice a lot of foundation gets into it and i just ripped it darn it uh you ripped it with your nail yeah i must have cool um and then hers is definitely yeah. a lot smoother yeah it's a so lot softer it's a lot squishier whereas this the beauty blender is more porous this is definitely has a lot softer more silky texture uh, but like I said, this is definitely going to give you a fuller coverage and it has the flat application, which I really like. I like this end more for like putting concealer in or buffing around the eyes. So I do like the fact that it has the flat edge also. So really it's depends. definitely an advantage over the beauty blender that has nothing yeah. like that. So I guess we'll go ahead and try and compare the real technique side to the beauty blender side because we pretty much have like similar acne scarring mm -hmm. you know and she's very dry I'm very oily so that's really the only difference I don't know I think they did so I think yours definitely applied uh heavier than yeah. mine did um you might have just used more product than I did but um yeah we tried to use the same amount we used pretty similar yeah I mean they definitely blended I think the same I don't see any spots on her face yeah. that leave brushes I don't I don't think I see yeah. any on mine um so, I mean, it kind of depends if you want a thicker coverage or lighter coverage. I think, how much was yours? This was, at Target, it's like $4.99, and at Ulta, it's like $6.99. So, that's definitely yeah. bang for your buck right and there. And I got the two-pack because when I actually bought this, uh, the single pack was sold out, so you get two for $10.99. So, you get two for half the price of one beauty blender. Yes, this is so, $20, bucks and it, I don't think it ever goes on sale. It's always $20. Yeah. Um, you know what? I, I might even switch to that one when this yeah. one is done, because I think that's a great deal right there, and it, it, yeah. it seems to work just fine. Yeah, it definitely works really great. And then, as far as the foundation brush, she had a Sonia Kashuk, what was it, a flat top foundation brush? Yes. And then, like I said, I had the It Cosmetics um, buffing foundation brush, and we'll show the difference between hers is a little bit smaller, mine's a little bit bigger, it's a little bit dirty right now, but. Um, mine's also more dense, and hers is definitely more fanned out. Yeah. So I think it depends. I think yours yeah. much, is much better for. Um, for like buffing? Uh, buffing, that's yeah. the word, thank you. Well, it is called a buffing foundation sponge, so you would hope so. <laughs> Here's on a little lid. <laughs> um, woo, um, how much was so. that one in comparison? Honestly, I don't know because my husband got this for me in a gift set for my birthday, but I think I looked it up um, for my last foundation video. I had to I linked the products down below and I think it was like $24. Okay. So, it is, it is a little pricey. The It Cosmetic brushes are very pricey. However, they are amazing products. It Cosmetics is a great brand for not being extremely expensive but not being extremely cheap. So, it's like a great middle ground. I yeah, think. no, that's a great price for this brush. This uh -huh. one I think was um 13. So, I mean, I guess it depends on, I don't know if they applied it any differently, like looking at our yeah. foreheads. Um, like again, no brush marks. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't notice a huge difference. Um, this one, I think definitely, like my skin, the way it feels, this one feels more sticky compared to the foundation. Um, so this one, I think applied heavier than it would on my forehead. So I think I got more product on my cheeks with the yeah. beauty blender than I did with the foundation with brush. With the foundation brush. I would say if you're going for full coverage, the brush plus the foundation sponge is definitely the way to go if you're trying to look uh, like a porcelain doll, as perfect skin as perfect skin can be. <laughs> the two together is a perfect blend. However, if you're looking for a one-stop shop, I do think that the Real Technique sponge is going to be the way to go. Also, the beauty blenders are great, but I feel like if you're trying to get more full coverage, you might have to use the stippling brush or a buff buffing brush mm -hmm. before the beauty blender and use the beauty blender just to buff it out and make sure that it's flawless she and, doesn't need um, and then lastly we use these little cosmetic yeah. sponges um which are latex free i got these from target i got a huge bag of them for a few dollars so um, I, I i actually liked this one the least yeah I, it uh it seemed to absorb a lot of product yeah, um, and then it, it didn't like you could still see my acne marks Same and stuff like here. that that you couldn't before yeah. compared to this side that looks not flawless obviously but I mean a lot better than this side does. Yeah, so we just wanted to show you guys what we thought really worked for our skin as far as oily skin and the staying power, the staying power of the foundation. I find that the Real Technique sponge and the brush really applies the foundation into the skin. It's really pressing it into the skin, and as long as you do that and you have a good foundation, I mean, you're golden. Yeah. You know, if you have a decent tool and a decent foundation, 
like we did the Estee Lauder Double Wear, which is a very full coverage foundation, and it seems to be sticking to both of our skin very well. I use this every single day. Um, I've been wearing this for, I wore one side of my face at least for a couple hours, and nothing seemed to yeah. go wrong. It didn't cling to any of my dry patches or anything, and it, the lasting, it, or it lasted well. Wow, that was a mess. <laughs> yeah, so I think, you know, at the end of the day, we... I don't know. I guess it's all preference, and we tried to do our best to show you guys what products we liked, what products we think are worth it for your money. Yeah, no, it's it a good works. experiment for what yeah. you'd like to see. So obviously you had two different people explaining. Um, hopefully it guides towards anyone's skin type, what they want on their face, the look that it's going for. And, uh, you know, if we helped you find a new application brush, then good. <laughs> okay. So give this video a big thumbs up if it helped you at all, you learned anything, and she'll be with you in her next beauty video. Yep, we'll see you guys soon. We hope you guys enjoyed this. Bye. Bye.